So I'll start. Welcome to today's lecture on how to succeed by failing the standards. I'm Michelle Zhuang. I'd like to start with a short excerpt of my daily conversation with a very intimate friend of mine. So I started with Wade, short for what are you doing? And he replied, hmm, nothing, lying on my bed. Why don't you do something? Nothing to do, la. What are you doing, huh? Question mark. So I said, um, nothing, just talking to you. And I got nothing to do too. From this conversation, it's probably quite obvious that both of us could be failing English here if our all over the place abbreviations, excessive repetition of letters, and even a grammar mistake there. But despite all that, this chat is totally functional. And we could go on and on just like that. But while this is how things usually go, I start to wonder, what if I started speaking proper English to him? What would happen? Would we still be able to communicate? So with full consideration of diction, punctuation, capitalization, I texted him, good evening, Gordon, period. I guess he was a little bit surprised. He asked, hmm, hi, are you OK? Then I went on trying to ask him how his day was that day without realizing I made a mistake until he kept sending me question marks, though I doubt it was due to the typo. Nevertheless, I apologized and said, I meant to type, quote, I was wondering how you spent your, your day today, end quote. Then he started getting pretty upset and even sent me a crying emoji. So I told him the truth, that it was just an experiment and thanked him for his participation. And the response I got was that. <laughs> so now in this example, we see how just switching from one form of language to another form has the power to create a very immense change. So what exactly is the power that arises from the distinction between standard and non-standard language? To answer this question, I looked up a few sources to find out what standard language really is. Standard language is basically a written form of language used in the public and embodies a certain perception of correctness and prestige. Then non-standard language is obviously anything that deviates from the standard. And you have mainly three ways to do that. First, accents, grammar, and language. All these have the power to create stratification, impose barriers, project one's identity, and ultimately affect your chance of success in the society. <laughs> Let's start with accents. The received pronunciation, or RP, is the standard accent in the UK. It is often used by the upper and middle class, and is associated with educated speakers and formal speech. This creates an accent bar with RP on the top and all the other accents on the bottom. What are the other accents? There are mainly 12 accents in the UK. Research in the 1970s and 80s show that different accents mark different social classes in the UK social hierarchy, with RP on the top and relatively standardized and educated Irish Welsh varieties in the middle, and the most stigmatized London and Birmingham working class accents at the bottom. Go out of my pop! Which sounds like Go that. on, go out of it! Shut it, you tart! Pretty rough. Okay, so only 3% of the population spoke the RP accent during that time, yet they were still able to position themselves at the top of the hierarchy. And parents that have children that speak accents of a higher status will often restrict their children from playing with kids that speak accents of lower statuses. This shows that the system of stratification creates barriers to communication. And the stratification system persisted to nowadays. The study in 2014 shows how the RP, Irish, and Welsh accents are continued to be received positively by the society, while the urban Birmingham and Liverpool accents are continued to be judged negatively by the society. And this created barriers to work. This article in 2013 said those that speak the standard RP accents 
can earn a few brownie points in an interview by sounding a bit posh, while additional hurdles are created for the marginalized regional youth and immigrant populations. In this case, sadly, if you're failing the standard accent, you're probably failing life in the UK. However, this isn't always the case. Sometimes non-standard grammatical features can actually help you gain a better position in a society. And how does this work? Unlike accents, it's pretty easy for us to differentiate between standard and non-standard grammar. And we do it all the time. I am no exception. And an example of a non-standard grammatical feature can be found in black vernacular English in the US. And this example is called deletion of the copula. Now, if you're thinking of something weird, like deletion of the copula, copula, no. Copula is the verb be in the form of is, are, am, etc. So an example of deletion of the copula would be going from he is a Batman to he a Batman. Now, American linguist William LaBeouf studied this phenomenon in young adolescent gangster members in New York City in the 1970s. He labeled four levels of integration from lames, isolated individuals, effectively outside of the culture, to peripheral members who are slightly integrated, just made it into the culture, secondary members, considerably integrated, secondary in the culture, to finally core members, fully integrated individuals at the core of the culture. And what he found was that as the degree of integration increases, incidence of copula deletion increases as well. This is another example of stratification, but in this case, you're better off if you speak the non-standard form. Those that spoke the standard form met barriers in trying to enter the culture. And the fact that the core members show the highest incidence of copula deletion, the strongest characteristics of black vernacular English, shows language's ability to serve as a social marker of group identity. Similarly, in Singapore, a former British colony now with four official languages, there are interesting non-standard grammatical features as well. For example, they say used to instead of used to. So an example would be from I used to go there to I used to go there. This is essentially a contrast between the British colonial norms and an emerging Singaporean grammatical feature. While students would learn the standard British English at school, they're more likely to adjust the local style, as Ms. Lin said here. By following your teacher's rule, you suspect that you may find yourself less able to communicate easily, for you feel that you'll be so conscious of rules that you'll be tongue-tied. Now, although Singaporeans definitely viewed the British English as the standard form, they wanted to sound like Singaporeans, not like Englishmen. So, you might want to speak like this if you want to succeed in Singapore. And so I used to speak like this too. So if you want to succeed in Singapore. <laughs> Finally, let's look at how non-standard and standard language can give you an advantage or a disadvantage in life. You will earn an advantage if you can create a barrier to communication. If you can speak a non-standard language that pretty much only you and your recipient can understand or you way might understand in this case. <laughs> but not everyone can do that. This type of language doesn't always exist. Then what happens when you switch between the standard and non-standard form of the same language? Let's examine the impacts by traveling 200 years back to traditional China, where two forms of languages existed. There was the standard form, Wen Yan Wen, which was associated with the styles of classic literature, and Bai Hua Wen, the non-standard language. This literally means plain language, meaning that it's straightforward and down to earth. And at that time, below the emperor, king, and governor, there were four social classes, Shi, Nong, Gong, Shang. And the class of Shi, containing scholars and officials, ranked well high above the other three classes. And for one to reach that level, one must excel in the civil service examinations, 
which tested one's ability to comprehend and write in the language of traditional classic text, and had the aim to identify the most capable men of letters. And success in examination linked directly to an appointment of a government position. And so if you want to be a successful guy like this guy, you might have to be pretty good at using the standard language. Now, we've looked at four different countries and four different contexts and had a grasp on how standard or non-standard language have the ability to create stratification, impose barriers, and protect an identity. And from traveling to the class-sensitive UK society, to gangster communities, to Singapore, to China, it seems that standard language will earn you a better position in schools and your career, while non-standard language will help you fit much better into your surrounding social environments. So next time, when you get into trouble socializing with a standard language, be sure to switch to a non-standard language immediately, and by failing the standards, hopefully you find success in life. Thank you. <laughs>